Ayman explained that the bank has non-collateral loans available to non-high-risk businesses. The business must be able to prove affordability of a loan. There is no substitute for affordability. If the business was making huge losses before COVID, chances are you will not get access to funding because how is it that you're going to start making profits when COVID impacted businesses to the extent that profits really evaporated? So you have to understand that it must be businesses that was financially successful before COVID and that can prove that they were financially successful and businesses where there's a reasonable expectation of recovery. If you're in tourism, yes, tourism will recover. It will take a while. It might not be in the next six months. It might not be in the next 12 months, but tourism will eventually recover. So when you apply, you need to be mindful because our debt is not in isolation. When we make a decision, we look at your existing debt and we look at the new debt, and then we have to make a determination. If we combine this, will you be able to cover the loan repayments, even if we give you a six to 12 month grace period? So that for me is very important because many clients unfortunately fall out when it comes to proving the affordability. He assured entrepreneurs that the notion that their proposals will be stolen is a non-starter as there are processes in place to protect their intellectual property such as whistleblowers hotline to report the culprits. Ayaman noted that the bank has a no tolerance for such behavior. He further said that business proposals can either be approved or declined based on the amount of research that has gone into the proposal. Pio Nganate, the Omaheke governor, said that most businesses in the region are not proactive, hence this presents an opportunity for the start-ups. Uh, businesses in Omaheke are still asleep. Uh, a lot of our young people are not into business, although they do have ideas. Now, with some of the products that were introduced by the development banks, such as the, the funding for artisans, the funding for professionals, we believe that many more young people will come on board with skills, with certain qualifications, and that they will set up businesses so that they can employ others. This is what some of the participants had to say. Lockdown cut me off completely. Um, okay, as, as much as when we opened up, um, we still had to struggle. People not trusting very much whether this person that I'm going to for my cake, is it safe? And then just buy a dress for your child and not the cake. So that also affected me as a bit. But if we keep attending such consultative meetings, we can actually acquire what we need to grow our business. So, it was actually perfect. Uh, and as you know, the tourism industry has been the most affected industry uh, since COVID uh, 20, 2019. And really in Omaheke, um, as in like any other um, parts of the country, tourism has been really on its knees. Um, negatively affected, uh, businesses are closed down, uh, people have been retrenched in some instances. For example, for us that are specializing in cultural and community-based tourism, uh, those businesses has come to a standstill. Um, but uh, I think with uh, the hope and session that we just went through with uh, Development Bank, we thank them to be here, and we hope that with the COVID relief fund, uh, there would be an opportunity to uh, resuscitate our businesses and maybe start revamping them again, and start uh, bringing communities again together and so on. So we hope, we hope for the best. Information is, is powerful. It was the right information. But the process, due process needs to follow and hope that uh, positive results will come out of that.